So this is not something you would normally find in the trash. And it was about, about a year ago that I got this laptop. Um, one of my friends, his son, found this in the trash. He works at a, I think a waste management, uh, like a recycling kind of center where, the, or not really recycling, but a processing center where they sort through and try to pull out any recyclable materials. And he brought this home and gave it to his dad. And his dad called me up and said, hey, I've got a couple of these old uh, laptops. And um, I said, okay, well, he, he said, here, you want to come over and get them if you want them? And uh, I said, sure, I'll be right over. And uh, this was one of them. The other one was an ancient uh, XP era Dell with Celeron processor, I think, or not. I don't know. It was real old. But this uh, MacBook was in the uh, pile, and I was like, that's not that old. I started looking around. It's actually a late 2011 Core i5 um, laptop, 2.4 gigahertz Core i5, 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Um, it had a 500 gig hard drive and it was new. I think it's a model A1278. Um, and of course, when I got it, it was totally destroyed. Um, and in fact, it had been sitting in his driveway for a couple of weeks in the rain. Which uh, probably wasn't the best for it, um, seeing as it was just fully uh, waterlogged, totally full of water, all corroded inside, just horrible. Like, the motherboard was just kind of white with corrosion. Um, so basically, uh, I figured out that the original reason this was probably thrown out was because of water damage. Um, the keyboard had a whole bunch of keys that were uh, all melted and uh, kind of warped and stuff. And it looked like either somebody had spilled something really hot on it, or somebody had spilled liquid on it and then tried to dry it out with like a hair dryer and overheated it. Um, so what I did was I tore the whole thing apart all the way down as far as I, I could get it, except for the screen assembly. I left that intact because um, that requires a heat gun and spudger and stuff. I just hope no water had uh, gotten into the screen assembly. But I tore everything apart and started just scrubbing it with soap and water and rubbing alcohol and um, contact cleaner and uh, stuff that will dissolve the uh, oxidation off. Got everything looking pretty good. Um, and I didn't have a charger for it, so I ordered one on eBay. It was an official one. Um, when I got that, got everything cleaned up, put back together, plugged it in, powered it on for the first time, without the battery, of course, because once a lithium-ion battery is wet, you pretty much never want to plug that back in, because it could literally catch fire. Um, plugged her into the charger, and I heard the, uh, ding sound when it came on. I said, no, that's a good sign, but nothing showed up on the screen. I started uh, started poking around at it further and discovered that if I held up a light to it, I could see an image. It was just the backlight wasn't working. So I actually uh, determined that there's a little uh, fuse on the motherboard, a tiny, tiny little surface mount fuse that had blown out because of the uh, water damage on there. And um, if I shorted across where that fuse went, backlight came on. And everything seemed to be working. Even the original hard drive still worked. So I ordered some little uh, surface mount fuses that were the right value for this, and I somehow managed to solder that back in there. It was not easy. Um, if anybody's ever done any surface mount soldering work, they'll know what I'm talking about. It's very, very tiny. As a matter of fact, I'll open this thing up here in a minute and show you uh, what part it is. Because if you have a Mac that's been water damaged and it's doing that symptom where the... Uh, backlight isn't uh, coming on. I'll show you what fuse it is and how to repair that. It's not too bad, and if you don't want to mess with the fuse, you really can just kind of jump across that with a little blob of solder, and it will work, except it's not going to provide any protection. So if, uh, if it would happen to get shorted out again in there, um, yeah, it's probably going to blow out the screen or the LED backlight or something. It's not going to be good for it. But as you can see here, This computer is fully operational now, and I even managed to replace the keys that were up here. I actually ordered a whole new keyboard and just popped the keys off that I needed because these are such a pain to get back out of here. I didn't feel like doing it again, so it was easier just to remove the keys and 
redo it from there. But this has been my uh, my main laptop along with my HP ProBook. It's kind of my the two laptops I use on a regular basis. This one has been just rock solid. I did have the uh, backlight go out one more time on me, but that's just because the first time I soldered that um, that fuse in there, it must not have quite made good contact and it came undone on one side of it and I just reheated it and moved it back down on there and it worked fine. So it's been holding ever since. Um, I got a brand new battery in it and I've upgraded the 500 gig hard drive that was in here originally to a 120 gigabyte SSD. So this thing is just lightning fast now. I wish I had a RAM upgrade for it. Problem is RAM for these is really expensive right now. Um, so yeah, I want to upgrade this to 8 gigs of RAM. It's only got 4 in it. But it's a really solid machine overall. I'm not exactly a huge fan of Apple computers, but I gotta say, these things are beautifully engineered inside and out. Um, it's just, I don't like I don't really like the company all that well, but hardware-wise, these are really, really nicely made machines. And it's actually one of the easiest laptops I've ever worked on, so it's really pretty simple. You just pop a few screws in the bottom, and the bottom panel comes off, and you have access to everything. So I can't really complain there too much. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and I'm gonna shut this thing down. And I will take it apart and show you the uh, fuse in here that I replaced. So I've just got a little, tiny little Phillips screwdriver here. Just got to be very careful not to strip out these screws because they are very, very delicate. Start at one point. Remove, I think there's ten screws in here. Yep, ten screws. Just remove all of those. And be very careful when you get to the end, when you're removing the panel, not to short it against the motherboard, because it is all still uh, powered in there. I found it really amazing that this thing actually survived the water damage without damaging anything other than that fuse. It was really, uh, these are really tough laptops, but I've been able to recover a lot of other laptops that have been water damaged as well. And really, most of the time, all you need to do is just dry them out good. Most of the time it doesn't even hurt anything, so... You know, one of my friends at school, they had a, um, it was an Asus laptop of some kind, and they had it sitting on their desk, and they left their window open during a big storm, and a bunch of water blew in and just ran down the, all over the front of the laptop and down inside of it and stuff, and it was running. And, um, all that really needed to be done, the, uh, power button, somehow like corroded all up inside of it but I dried it out really good cleaned the corrosion out of the power button circuit board put it back together and it worked fine so usually laptops survive water fine and that goes for most computers and a lot of times I'll actually clean computer components like circuit board or the motherboards and stuff just uh, by washing them with soap and water I wouldn't really recommend it unless it's older stuff that you don't care about that much, but really getting computer components wet, as long as they're totally unpowered, isn't really a problem. You'll notice something right off the bat here. There should be a DVD drive here. Well, I borrowed that to put in the Z600 over there because it needs a slimline optical drive to use that custom faceplate on it. So. I figured since I never use it in this laptop, I would just swap it. Um, but yeah, if you look, let me move these screws off to the side. The area where the um, fuse is is right here. If you can see that tiny, tiny little fuse there. It's a little bit of. Uh, shiny stuff around just right at the tip of my finger there. It's a little chip with, uh, I don't know, it's got like a little marking in the center of it. I can't tell if it's an F or an N or something. But that's all there is to it. You just have to remove that, which is about the size of a grain of sand, and replace it. It's not easy, but it is doable. 
Um, yeah, so basically when you're doing this, all you really have to do is remove power from the uh, board. You really want to dry everything out good if it's been water damaged. And uh, this one, the chip was totally blown off of the board. Like, it, w it wasn't there. It was just a little charred spot. So I cleaned off the pads and um, ordered one of those chips. And just, um, I took a little bit of solder flux on the end of a toothpick, picked it up with that, and set it down on the board. And uh, tinned both sides and just tacked it on there. Um, it's, uh, it's quite a fiddly process. It can take a lot of attempts. So if you do try doing this... Make sure you buy like 10 or 15 of the fuses because it really doesn't cost much more for a whole bunch of them than it does just one. They're really not much at all, just a few cents really. It costs more for shipping than the actual devices. So buy a bunch of them because if you drop it, it's gone. You will never find it again. They just disappear in the floor. Um, they just look like a little speck of dirt, you know. So, yeah. Well, guys, this has been a great laptop for me. Um, it's just been it's been nice and reliable. The only problem I ever had was when I upgraded to uh, Yosemite on here, and it started having all kinds of weird software problems, so I downgraded it back to Mavericks, and it's been fine ever since. Um, so, yeah. It's, uh, it's not the end of the world if your laptop does get wet or water damaged. Um, so, yeah, if, if it's totally dead... Give it a try, open it up, dry it out good. This one was uh, out of warranty, so if everything's out of warranty for you, give it a shot, you know, you don't have anything to lose. But if it is under warranty still, do not do this on your own. Take it into the shop, have them fix it, because there is a high likelihood that you could break something while doing this. So I'm not responsible for anything that happens to your stuff if you do try this method. But all I'm saying is there's a good chance that... Um, if you have a computer that gets wet, it'll be fine if you just dry it out. And with minimal damage to the components, like this was hardly any damage really to it at all. There was just one chip that was blown, and it was really easy to replace. So, yeah. Alright guys, if you have any questions about this, drop them in the uh, comments. Like if you thought it was cool, and y'all have a good one.